right there. That's it. Look at me. Look at me. Look at my face. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at me. Look at my face. Thank you, Lord. That's it. Right there. Look at me. Look at my face. Thank you, Lord. That's fire going through your body now. Look at my face. Thank you, Lord. That's fire going through your body now. Look at my face. Thank you, Lord. Look at my face. Thank you, Lord. Help her get up now. Help her to get up now. Help her to get up now. Help her to get up now. Thank you, Lord. Help her to get up now. Help her to get up now. Look at me. 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 Take a step towards me. Take a step. Look at me. Look at me. Take a step. Look at me. 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 Thank you, Lord. Because now her muscles are moving. You'll never go back to the wheelchair now. Amen. 
head right there. And go back to that same doctor and you tell them, look at me. Look at me. You tell that doctor, look at me. You walk in there. Uh, I think we have so, you know, I want to do this testimony in three parts. Number one, you guys, you don't know Joy. You don't know her story, you don't know where she come from. So number one, I want her to tell us, number one, everybody wants to know, how did you get in that situation? Were you born, were you born or you couldn't walk? Did you used to walk and the accident happened? What happened? How did you get in that situation? Number one. Then number two, we'll go to the medical side so we can all understand what's really going on. You know, sometimes you don't understand what a person goes through until they share what they have to encounter every day. You can never get the full understanding of that testimony. If somebody's a lunatic and they come to testify and you've never been a lunatic before, how can you understand what that person is going through? So number one, we'll give, let her, give her testimony of who she is, where she come from, you know, what happened to get in that situation. Then number two, we'll hear from the medical. I see they brought all kinds of stuff. They have documents, everything. So we'll let them give that testimony. And then number three, we'll hear uh, we'll see what happened, and she can give her testimony what happened last Sunday. Amen? Amen. 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 So you, go ahead. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I greet you in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen. It is so Amen. real in this place and in our lives, and I am just so happy to be here to bring glory to him because he's just so great, and honestly, I'm just well, I'm just speechless. I really can't get over it. I've been like overjoyed all week. Uh, gosh, God is so good. I'm so happy to be here to give testimony. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I was a prof uh, pre-professional ballet dancer. I started dancing when I was only six years old. Um, it was a dream of mine to become a professional uh, ballet dancer one day. <laughs> Oh yes, and then in the summer um, of last year, I got a scholarship to attend um, a summer intensive in Kansas City. It was such an exciting opportunity. It was like a place I've always wanted to go to and just getting a scholarship was the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me in my dance life. Um, but like, I went into the first day of class and I just wasn't feeling good. I was feeling really dizzy. I felt like I was gonna pass out. And that's what happened at the end of the day after rehearsal. I was passed out, was taken to the emergency room, and um, that was my first time ever being in an emergency situation and having ever passed out for the first time. It was scary. I was terrified. I wasn't sure what was happening to me, and yeah, it was scary. And that was where um, my life changed drastically. Um, so I thought things would get better from there, but um, it didn't. <laughs> Um, things just getting kept getting worse. I kept feeling worse and worse. I was getting so dizzy. I had to hold on to walls and keep myself from falling over. Um, every time I stood up, I would just like my vision would just shrink in, and I couldn't see anything for a while. I'm just so so sick. Um, I started seeing doctors to try and figure out what's going wrong. Um, they did so many tests, like MRIs and CAT scans and blood work and so many other weird tests um, and that's when I got my diagnoses. Um, apparently I was born with a genetic condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS. It's a, a connective tissue disorder which means that the glue uh, that... Say it one more time, what is it called? Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Okay, now what is the abbreviation? EDS. EDS, okay, go ahead. It basically means that the glue that holds my body together doesn't work well. So that manifests in a bunch of different horrible ways. One of which that affected me um, really badly was my joints. They would dislocate and fall apart really, really easily, even when I'm sleeping. I would have to be waking up several times throughout the night to fix this hip, fix this rib, this shoulder, that knee, that toe, that hand, that wrist, everything would just fall apart and I was so tired in the day because I was just up all night fixing joints. It was like a part time, no, not a part time, it was a full time <laughs> job for me. <laughs> um, well, so the, um, oh yes, and then um, the fainting thing, it just kept getting worse and I did a bunch of testing as you can see here, the tilt table to figure out what was going on. They had a bunch of leads stuck to me measuring my um, vitals and heart rate and oxygen in my blood and they figured out that I had a condition called POTS 
um, which stands for a long name, which I won't tell you because it will just go right over. Um, but basically, it's, it happens because um, EDS has made my blood vessels really, really weak and stretchy. So when I stand up, all the blood goes down into my feet, and then there's not enough in my heart and my brain. And when that happens, that makes me pass out. Um, so yeah, I had to give up dancing altogether, which was a really hard thing for me to do just because I loved it so much. I've done it since I was little. It was basically my whole life. Ballet was everything to me, and I had to trade point shoes for the chair. That wasn't a great transition for me. Um, yeah, it was just getting to the point where I was just fainting all the time. Just standing up, I would just drop immediately. So it was getting too dangerous, so I had to remain sitting at all times. Um, I had to rely on my family for a lot of stuff, like taking me um, to and from the bathroom, taking me to the car to get to appointments. And that's honestly, aside from the park, that's kind of all I went. Bathroom, bed, doctor appointment. That's really all I went to. Um, yeah, it was a really hard um, place to be in, but I tried to keep strong in my faith, and I tried to believe as hard as I could that Jesus would one day heal me. But like after a while, it just got so hard for me to keep believing because it just nothing was happening. We were all praying. My grandma was in Canada fasting for me, and just we weren't seeing anything, and I was just so confused, and I thought maybe this would be my lot in life. I have one question for you go for what are those pills that we're seeing there? <laughs> so the doctor told me the only hope we can give you because EDS and all the other things have no cure. Mm. So all they could give me was a ton of medicine to manage pain, um, nausea, vomiting, and all the other symptoms that I had um, to try and manage it. That's really all the hope I could get. And then um, a uh, brace for my neck in the car because um, my neck bones would shift and that was really painful and dangerous. Uh, you could pinch nerves back there and you don't don't want to go there. Um, because obviously in the wheelchair I had to, I got the um, disability parking pass. Um, my doctor legally deemed me disabled. Um, so that's what that's all about. And can you show those pills? Because I think I saw them yeah. I don't want to oh gosh, there's like so those many. were all yours, just yours. Yeah. You sure yeah. that wasn't for the sister and you together? No, it is all me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot, and I've gone through. This is like mostly refills, so I've been through a lot more than this. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. Um, a lot of them didn't work. Like they would work very small amounts. I could enough to the, that it kind of gave me some relief, but it didn't help enough and I would still be in pain. So, so those were a lot just for pain? A lot of pain, a lot of nausea medicine. Yeah. Let, let your mom talk, she's saying something about the pain. Um, yeah, there were just pain management was the best that the doctors could do. And they were all, simple. they really felt for her that a, a girl your age should not be going through this, but that's all they could do. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'll tell you about her um, stomach issues that she couldn't eat or drink as yeah. well. Okay, so the last two months, like May and June of this year, um, things just started getting a lot worse really, really quickly. Um, it turns out that um, so after doing a lot of testing, that EDS was also starting to partially paralyze my intestines. Um, so I had a really hard time with stomach pain, intestinal pain, a lot of bloating and nausea, a lot of vomiting, I couldn't eat hardly anything. I never felt hungry. I completely forgot what hunger felt like. Um, and I couldn't eat anything without severe pain. Um, I was in the hospital a lot throughout the past two months um, because I couldn't eat or drink enough to hydrate myself and feed my body. So they had to give me fluids into a vein in my arm to keep me hydrated and keep me alive. Um, the doctors even uh, recommended and we're very very close like if God didn't step in just last week I would have had to go through this they suggested I get a feeding tube surgically placed into my um, intestines to help keep me alive um, I was in the hospital in and out of the hospitals like for over the past 
two months, every week, like I would just have to go in constantly, um, just for to, for basic fluids and to for pain medicine also because all of a sudden um, medicine stopped um, absorbing into my stomach, mm. and so I had to get them pumped into my veins also, which was really difficult. So, so how often would you go into the hospital for them to put food inside of you because you weren't eating? Um, it would have, have to go in like at least once a week. It was wow. just getting so bad. And then they just put the tube in and literally They didn't put it you. in. They were going to. They were very, very close to. Mm, they put fluids into my veins, oh, though, veins. and medicine. Yeah. Um, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> so she much she came remember. prepared. She even has notes. I did, I did. Okay. There's a lot to remember. So yeah, um, I was in the hospital and I was I was bored out of my mind. I didn't have any Wi-Fi there, and the only app that I had open that didn't require Wi-Fi was the Bible app, and that's because you know I had the the NLT version downloaded, and I was just like, okay, I'll just read this because, you know, I, I my spirit needs it. I just need some spirit food right need right now because obviously I can't get any physical food. So, spirit food it went. I read in, hold up. Mark 8, and if you were on the prayer line last night, which you should be if you're not, but it was fantastic. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, we went over Matthew, I think it was 8. Yes, um, Matthew verse 8, verse 1. And it uh, says, When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. He was immediately cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. I realized after reading that, that God is indeed willing and that this didn't have to be my lot in life. This sickness and this illness didn't have to be mine and I just I am a child of God and he loves me and he wants to give me better so that's when it really clicked in my head that you know what I can get I can have better than this I can have a better life than being chronically ill for the rest of my life and dying sick I can have more than this um so I, after getting home from the hospital, I told my parents I need to get to church physically. I've been watching online here um, in Cheris Dallas on the um, Facebook Live, which is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. But I knew the spirit has got it in the physical place and I need to be there. I need to get there. So I got all my strength um, to come here. My family pushed me over here and I did my best not to faint. <laughs> uh, I sat in the back, just up back there, and I listened. Hold on, she's cutting the story short. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, what happened is this. So they wanted to be baptized, and we were doing baptism in the church. But obviously it would be very tough for her to come, try to be baptized and all that, because it's very, it's very tough for her. You know, she visited the church before. Just to stand up, it was one week, she almost lost her life. Just standing up, she started to black out. So from there she said, no, there's no way I can come back because it's too much pain. So she would stay home and she would watch the live service. She would be on the prayer line every Saturday, but she said, there's no way I can come, it's too much pain. So they asked us, is it possible we can go to their house and baptize them? So we brought everything to the house. We baptized the whole family. Everybody was baptized, except for this one, we're coming for him. <laughs> we're coming for him. You know, he doesn't like for it to lean back in the water to come over. I said, don't worry, you just lean forward. We'll put you in that way, you come up, you'll think you're swimming. It doesn't matter which way, it's only religion. So we're coming for him. But anyway, after that, I went to the room, or before that we were talking, and I told her, don't be ashamed to come here, even if they have to put the whole bed in the bed. I said, you'll be a testimony for many people. I said, God, show me there'll be wheelchairs lined up across the whole church. Because people, they want, they want the power of God. So you'll be the first testimony for many people. And I said, I don't care if they have to put your whole mat on the floor and you lay there with a cover. Don't ever be ashamed. That's how church is supposed to be. Amen. It's not you sit in the back, nobody says anything, and it's just we go home. No, you come straight to the front, you sit there, and you say, Lord, I'm here. What are you going to do? I'm here. 
And so I told her, and I told the family the same thing. You guys don't ever be ashamed of anything. I know the AC was tough, but <laughs> you do what you have to do. So I told her, you come, it doesn't matter. So they came with the whole lawn chair. The whole thing was laid out. She was there comfortably. I mean, laid up, <laughs> just comfortable. I'm preaching, I'm like, man, that chair looks very comfortable. <laughs> it was a zero gravity chair, it was very comfortable. Yes, what is it called? Zero gravity, so apparently it has like zero gravity on your joints. Yes, it was a very comfortable chair. Even me, I was hoping to get in the chair when she was getting out. <laughs> you know, they left the wheelchair. I was hoping they would leave that other chair. Because I was going to come on Wednesday and do a serious thing here. But they took the zero gravity, so it's fine. But she kept saying that she came. She, at first, they weren't, she wasn't coming. The week before, they called and said, is the AC fixed? That's the first thing. The week before her healing, they called. She was like, is the AC fixed? And they were like, oh, no, it's, it's better. Is it good enough to bring your own daughter to church? He said, ah, oh, no, maybe we'll wait. So they didn't come the week before. Then last week they came, the AC was very nice last week. And they, she said, no, we can bring her for sure. And then she came, okay, now you can carry on. Okay, so about the lounger. lounger. <laughs> um, I was going to just tough it out or like lie on the floor or something. As I didn't, I wanted to be just as minimal as possible. I didn't want to make a big show. I didn't, I mean, to be honest, it was embarrassing. I did not want to sit in that thing. Um, I told my mom, God is going to do it for me because I do not want to sit in that chair another week. I'm just going to sit in there once. So that happened. Mm -hmm. We went back there. I sat there. It was comfortable. It was, it was, it was pretty good. Um, and then I was just praying the entire time. I was, uh, I was a, <laughs> a sobbing mess the entire time. I was just praying and just saying, God, don't forget me. Don't forget me. I'm your child and I want this. I want your gift of healing and I want your gift and I want to carry out whatever purpose you have for me. Mm. I believe you have one. I believe it's good. Um, so after service, um, we went up for prayer and... Now uh, hold on. You have the video I sent you. There? Yeah. You can play it.
Everybody stand up and clap to the Lord. Stand up and clap to the something like that you don't need a Spanish translation you don't need uh, an Indian translation you simply give your life to Christ you go to heaven Amen. you simply say no the Lord is good he's worthy to be praised I'm going to heaven any sin I take care of I'm done that's it you simply give your life to Christ amen yes. you don't need anything else when you watch the power of God you just simply say Lord I give my life to you I'll go to heaven now you can do it for me amen yes. hey, uh, let's finish the testimony though I think we need to pray for the TV as well. Uh, for whatever disease that is. My God. Imagine the TV. No, you can just unplug it. The TV thing. Oh, you got it on it. Yeah, that's probably been the best day of my life. Amen. Amen. So, so for you, you can just walk us through what you were feeling or what happened with the healing. And then from there, you can tell us your update, how you've been, yeah. and we'll give glory to God. Yeah, when he tapped me on the head and my legs, I just felt like I, the Holy Spirit. I just felt like a warm, tingling feeling like throughout my entire body. And then he told me to stand up, and um, so I decided I did stand up in faith, and I trusted that it wouldn't hurt or that my ankles and my knees wouldn't crumble underneath me. Um, Instinctively, my body knew if you stand up, something's going to hurt, something's going to fall apart, it's not going to be good, don't do it. But I knew in my heart, God did it for me. It's over. I can stand up now. Mm. And I stood up, and then um, I didn't feel any pain. I didn't feel like my ankles were falling apart. My knee cast weren't sliding all over the place. My hips felt stable. My ribs weren't shifting on me, and my spine wasn't in as much pain as well in any pain as it has been for the past day um earlier in the service i dislocated my wrist while wiping tears from my face and that pain was completely gone mm. my stomach wasn't hurting at all i was i had never been in, i had never been painless in my life and that was like the first time i was like my god you are so good and i just followed him around the room i walked down that aisle and i came back and oh gosh. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then I left the place. I left the wheelchair right there and I went home walking. <laughs> yeah. I was so happy. I spent the rest of the day like exploring places in my house that I wasn't able to go. <laughs> Just figuring out where all the things in the high cabinets were that I couldn't reach. Oh gosh, it was so fun. Relearning how to walk has never been so fun. It was a, such a fun journey, and honestly, it didn't take that long. I got the knack of it pretty quick. <laughs> God is so good. Um, I didn't take any medicines that night. I normally take medicines in the morning and the noon and at night. I didn't take it that night, and I went to bed. And I woke up the next morning, and I went to put my hips back in because that's normally like my morning ritual. I just need to put my hips back in. They weren't out, so I didn't have to put them in. <laughs> my shoulders were in place for the first time. I was even sleeping on my bad side that night, and my shoulders didn't come out, and I had nothing to do. I was like, what do I do this morning? <laughs> so um, I, I went to get myself ready for the day, I stood up for the first time that morning and I was like, God, there's no pain in my ankles. They're not falling apart. They're not crumbling. Nothing hurts. So I went and I brushed my teeth. My 
fingers and my uh, wrist didn't dislocate when I was brushing my teeth. That was, oh, it was the best feeling ever. Um, I didn't take any medicines that morning. And at breakfast, when I ate, nothing hurt at all. I wasn't feeling nauseous. I didn't feel like I needed to throw up. It was completely healed. Like God miraculously did it for me. Um, I, I was so excited. I spent the entire day learning how to walk again. I decided I wanted to go to Target. So I went shopping with my mom and my sister. Um, it was a blast. It was so overstimulating, just like feeling all the different things, looking at all the different colors, smelling the, the scented candles over there. It was just, and to be able to walk my way through everything was just so, so amazing. Oh my goodness. Um, and now for the first time in years, I can do things that I've never done before in my life. Like I can now uh, play with my dog now and I was able to uh, make breakfast with my sister. I can wash my own hair standing up and if I, I didn't faint, I didn't pass out mm -hmm. and my elbows and my shoulders, my wrists and my fingers didn't dislocate. It was phenomenal. God is so good. Amen. Um, I'm eating and drinking normally. I. I don't know how many pounds I've gained this week, but it was good. <laughs> um, I haven't seen my, I haven't had to go to the ER. I haven't had a migraine this week. God's healing was perfect and complete. Like he just finished every single thing. You went to that doctor. When you went to that doctor, because you know, I told them, they said, no, we don't need to go to the doctor. We're canceling all our appointments. I said, no. You go back to that doctor, and you tell him, look at me, look at me, look at me. So tell us what happened when you went to that doctor. I went in, and um, the doctor came out and called my name for to take me back, and I stood up and walked to him, and he was like, are, are, are you walking now? And I was like, yes, I, Jesus has healed me completely. I, I just wanted to come and um, share my testimony with you, and... He was, he was shocked. He took me back and he talked to me. He was like, so you don't need your medicines anymore? And I was like, no, I've been off my medicines all day, all night, and all this morning. I don't, I'm not in any pain. Everything's working the way it should. I, I don't need any more medicine. I don't need my brace in the car to keep my neck bone sh from shifting. I'm completely healed. And he was so shocked and so bewildered. And I don't even know if he was happy. Like he didn't look happy he just walked out of the room on me <laughs> um, well you have to hate satan i tell you yeah um what did we do we we asked for the tests again from the last time. yeah we asked for the results from last time and it very explicitly said that you know um the system was broken it wasn't working right and um we did vitals again and he took took my blood pressure heart rate everything and he was like i don't i i don't think we can even do the test because you're so obviously healed like you, your vitals are perfect everything was just normal Imagine a doctor saying, we can't even test you because I can tell you. <laughs> Me, I'm not dumb. I know Jesus did something here. Oh, I tell you. Now, the, your mom has to tell us about this Zoom conference that they had. This oh. one you have to Oh, hear. gosh, it was, the, it was, it was the best. She has to tell you this story. So we have family in Canada, Singapore, Australia, New York. And I said, how are we going to tell? Who do we tell first? And I thought, Lord just gave me, you know, let's do them all at once. Get it over with. And so I... With the whole Zoom thing, I thought that was perfect. So we set it up as usual. We want to, you know, call it an urgent family meeting in half an hour. And I never thought, we don't even have, we can't even take a week to, to find a time. <laughs> when I said urgent family meeting, half an hour, everyone showed up and changed their schedule. 
everyone thought it was something horrible that happened. My mom would text me first, can I, you tell me first because my heart can't take it. She said, you have to call me first and tell me what's going on. So I said, okay, we'll call you first. And you know, so we called her first and um, we had Jordan in her bed like usual. We had the, all the kids and Sam. And then we talked to her as usual, thanking her for her prayers and her fasting. And um, then we just said, you know, Jordan wants to say hi to you. She thought, I'll just zoom in on her. We turn the camera around, and then Jordan walks out of her room standing, and my mom's face just dropped, and it was shock all over. Amen. Amen. Yes, we have, to wrap, uh, we have to hear from the father of the house. His experience in this testimony, and then we have to hear from the sisters yeah. and the children. I have spent this entire week sharing this testimony with all my coworkers because uh, they all know they've been following Jordan's story for the last year. I've taken many days off work. My boss knows the whole story. He knows how sick she is, um, and I share the story with him. And I don't know. He, I think he comes from a Christian background. I'm not sure. But he said, Sam, the moment you started telling me the story, I got tingles all over my whole body. And um, yeah, and then I showed him the video off the Facebook and he was, he's in shock. Um, but he is, all, all my coworkers are so happy. Some of them, they, they know it's Jesus. Some of them don't. And some of them just say, whatever works for you, that's great. <laughs> you know, we'll take it. But uh, it has been the most amazing week of our lives to see God choose our family for this, like, and choose this church, and choose these pastors to lead us through this. It is such a privilege to, to be here. And um, I was just telling Mary, as we were working on these photos, that God's healing is complete, not just on the physical side, but on the, on the emotional and spiritual side. Yeah. And I'm, as I'm, we were working on those images, I was looking at them saying, who is this poor family? This isn't our family. We didn't have this problem. We are healed. And I, I felt, and then I realized, oh wait, that was us. That was us going through this pain. But I don't feel the pain anymore. Amen. We have been healed. And I, I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Where to start is I haven't been sad all week. I just nothing can make me sad. I just I've been so happy. I feel like we're like a complete family again, you know. Like it was so hard just to see her in so much pain. And you know, every time that she'd have to put her joints back in, I would like, you know, I would cry inside, just like, oh my gosh. Every time like she would like almost black out every time she stood up or anything and just to see her not be able to eat and to see her growing so thin and weak I was just it it like hurt so bad and I just I'm so thankful that God could see God could see it and God God knew all the pain that we were experiencing as a family and that um he was hurting just as much for us I'm sure and I know that he was just waiting for us um, for our faith to grow to the point where he um, he could step in, he could meet us, Amen. and I'm I'm just I'm glad that it happened. I'm so thankful he did it, and I I just I can't I'm at a loss for words. I, I can I can hardly handle it. I I when she was got up and started walking, I every time I just like have to look again and be like, wait, what? <laughs> And yeah, when she got up for the first time, I like ugly cried the entire time. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we just we just pray. I just praise God that He's so good. He's so good. Yeah. He's so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you now. Now we're about to worship God. One song, two songs, and we'll go to service. If you can't worship God after that, no, you just need to go to the other room, we'll deliver you after service. <laughs> you come back in after service, we'll deliver you, get your mind right, and then from there you serve God. No, if you can't lift your hands and just say, Lord, you're a good God. Amen. Number two, good if God. you don't know that they're testifying like this, whatever you're going through, it's only a test of faith. Amen. That's, that's it, it's only a test of faith. Amen. She didn't come the first time, get healed and walked out. No, every week, every week, praying, crying. 
The grandmother's been fasting and praying even before we ever met her. So imagine all the prayers that have been going into her. Families, people coming together, praying for her all night long, all day long. And finally, God says, no, it's her time now. I'm telling you, whatever you're going through and you want God to do for you, it can happen today. Amen. It's simply a test of faith. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You can come to the Lord.